You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and we're on a Milton Bradley game called Input. But I want some input from people out there in the world. Do you like older games? Do you collect older games? If you see them, would you buy them just because you want to try them? That's the kind of person I am. If I see a game, looks cool from the cover, like this one here, I think, hey, let me give it a shot. Might be a fun game. So it's game number 4409. It's from 1984. It's called Input. Now, when we found it, it was complete and all there. So let me get this out of the bottom section. So this is only a two-player game. So not a four-player, not a three-player, just two. And they're sitting opposite each other. So here's the input game board. Okay. See? So your tiles go on one side. Now, they're colored red and blue, and they have an open hole. That open hole is always facing towards that player. Now think of these as little circuit paths, and you're inputting them into your whatever, your computer system, you know. And you set up like this. Both players, so this person setting up this way here. I'll show you how I have them set up there when I get them all laid out. So this was from an estate sale, and it was uh, $2. Okay, so there's red. Now all the input circles, uh, open circles are down, and there's blue, same thing. So you have certain moves you can do. The main thing is, is that your circuit always needs to start up here. So, I mean, what else can I tell you quickly here? The object, the final object is to cap and collect the other person's circuit. So, blue's collecting red and red's collecting blue. So your first move has to be out to the holding or resting area, okay? I'll show you the instructions. Here, let me do that first. So if anybody doesn't have the instructions, they can quickly you know, enlarge the video. So here's here, I can do two pages at a time. So pause and enlarge everybody out there if you need this information. Hopefully you can get it big enough to understand. Alright. Because you're following the pattern on each tile. See right here? This tile starts out there in the A position goes to B, C, D, E, and then that last step, which is F, and that F, the person can either put it back to the A position or put it back to their starting area. So once you complete the circuit, so this one here is going to go to the middle, then it's going to go to here, okay, then here, then here, then here, it's completed its circuit, so it can either go back to here, when it's done, or it can go back to there, or it could stay there. It doesn't have to be pulled off the board right away, but if someone's about to capture it, you do want to move it out. So now what we're seeing here is this, this player can either take another piece and go on top, because he's not set yet. This person can move into the game area. Now this person could either take this, move it to the next position, or they could stack another one on top just to see what this person's going to do. So this person now can move here, can start another circuit piece, and that's their move. So let's just say that is the move. Now this person here has to finally, you know, do something. Can't, don't want to stack them all there. I guess you could. So the next move now is blue, and blue has taken its first position, and then the red would move here. Okay, kind of getting it. Let me see if I can give you a better top down here. Now this one can come out into the game area. Red can finally decide, hey, I'm going to do that. Blue decides, all right, I'm going to move this one out to the game area. Just making some camera adjustments there because of the glare. And then, all right, so we're in a position now. I cannot occupy my own space, but I can go over my player to there. And red's not paying attention now. 
Why is red not paying attention? I don't know, because you're talking about, you know, the weather. Because blue is in a position now to capture the red. If red's not paying attention, red says, oh, that's my move. Well, they just made a mistake. Because this circuit goes to that position. So now this piece is captured and off the game board. So now let's just say red is still not paying attention and they decide to take this oops and move it out here all right gotta pick up that piece because they're still not paying attention for whatever reason blue can now capture that piece so the game goes on but let's say blue decides oh, I'm gonna move this here and red realizes oop can move up to that position so now red captures a blue and you keep going and going till you've captured each other's circuits, all right? And by the end, and there's a situation too at the end where both pieces never match up, just the way the game play. That means it's a tie, and you both say tie. But you'll see, if you've played it enough, that eventually, based on the moves, and if you time them and do them right, someone will always win. So that is the game of input. And I have to say, Glad I picked it up at the state sale. Once I saw this box and how cool it was from the picture and this glow of the red underneath the game board, that'd be cool if they had a light underneath it. But hey, give it a shot. And I'm glad I did. So, you know, leave a comment below. Is this something that maybe you would pick up or not play? Or what about the person out there that grew up on this and loved this game and played it with family and remembers that? Let us know. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Here is the game of input, and the last thing I'll say is, there might be other little minutia here in the instructions or little details not gone over in this gameplay. We're just here to give you a basic understanding of the game. Maybe it's something you would like or might want to play. So that's it, and thanks for watching. Later! This video is now over. If you want to see more videos in this series, check the description, search the channel, or click here. And always remember, if you see a lucky penny, pick it up!